Good morning, everybody, and welcome to your Mindset and Marketing Maximizer with Pam. I'm going to invite a few people to join me this morning. I hope they can. I hope you are all having a great week. It's been kind of a crazy weekend around here for us, but I think all of this water, extra water floating around our house, I think I'm, I think I'm finally winning the battle. <laughs> so, uh, so, cause I'm um, pretty much been pumping water, kind of all of our property since it's been over a week now. It's like 10 days. And longer than that, like 11 or 12 days, almost two weeks. And it's been kind of a struggle because uh, I kind of did something to my back here not too long ago. But it's been feeling better. So I went out and did some more like pumping kind of stuff over the last couple days. And yeah, I think I'm kind of getting a handle on it. Luckily, our basement, um, we dug in a sump pump here a couple years ago. And it's been going like crazy. It's starting to taper off now where it's not pumping like as soon as like as soon like it's filling as fast as it can pump basically, right? We just we dig a hole in our basement concrete and we put in a bucket with like a bunch of little holes in it and then you put in a sump pump and then it was just like filling. Like as soon as it would pump it out, it would just like cascade in again. So that's been not so bad lately. It's not been going like every minute, 30 seconds. But, um, and then outside has been really good. Uh, only a little bit of water in. We have a window that's kind of like in the front of the house. So the sump pump's kind of in the back. And then the way, there's a window in the front in the basement. And the way that our walkway is, is because it's not cemented yet. It's been dug for cement. So it's all gravel, but it's lower. So it's like a funnel, acting like a funnel that brings water into like underneath our deck. And then it like trickles down to where the window is and then it comes in through the window into our basement. So I've only gotten a little bit of water in that way this year. Hopefully it stays away now. It's like beautiful and sunny and windy again today. So more drying weather, which is amazing. So other than that, um, just dealing with animals, you know, it's spring, so we're getting everybody dewormed and some hooves trimmed and our one big guy needs his, um, he needs shoes because he's got a split on one of his feet. So, you know, it's just all about it's spring, you know, getting stuff cleaned up. Um, we've been tidying up, getting equipment ready for starting to cultivate our land. We're gonna do some more fertilizer again this year because we had a really good crop of hay last year from that. So we're super excited to get that going. We're looking at um, maybe getting a new to us tractor this year. So it's all about just the progression of our farm and just kind of getting that going for the season. Um, what else? Not much else. No, Zoe still. Oh, Zoe got. Oh, I'm so excited. Zoe got student of the month with her jujitsu class. Uh, was announced yesterday, and she got a new stripe on her belt, so she's very excited. I'm really grateful that the Komodo Academy has allowed us to do virtual classes. So she does virtual classes twice a week, and um, so she goes on Zoom, and I put my computer on our big TV in the living room and then she just does her thing. So it was pretty cool. And they could see them, like they can watch the kids do their work and then they can assign them stripe belt testing or whatever. They've been doing it for a month now, just over a month. We've been doing the virtual classes. It's been really good. So really, the only thing is that I have to do all the stuff with her. So I'm like in there doing jumping jacks and burpees and push ups and, and it's good for me because that kind of keeps me on track too with my fitness. It's been kind of gone downhill the last little bit, which I need to step up my game again. Um, but today, speaking about getting into my mind, I want to talk about, I've been talk, focusing a lot. Oh, hey, Jenna. <laughs> I didn't even see you pop on. I've been focusing a lot on kind of marketing people that either have started businesses or are looking to start a business, like things that they can do. Uh, while they're either in isolation at home or either like to start out. 
um, getting, getting things rolling with your like marketing on your business or soon to be business. And I, I like to talk about mindset stuff too, because mindset is, is probably, I think, um, we had a, like an intense seven hour session with Todd Campbell. If you don't know who that is, he's amazing. Um, he is the facilitator of that course that I took in November of 2018 called Awaken. And he's got a new like three day experiential, um, ex like experiential event. Um, once all of this social distancing stuff goes away, uh, I'm sure it'll come back. Cause it was supposed to happen at the beginning of this month, but it did, the first one was supposed to be, um, in Kelowna and I was really wanting to attend but it's called insight so it's kind of like awaken but he's like it's like awaken on steroids I'm like oh <laughs> so more crying good <laughs> I did a lot of crying at awaken there's a lot of revelations and a lot of like self like inner work which was amazing so he says that mindset in your business is probably at least you know 80 85 percent of your business you know marketing and like the vehicle in which you propel your business is only that other 15 to 20 percent so mindset being key in any entrepreneurial endeavor i like to talk about that once in a while as well and that's why i call it mindset marketing that's kind of what my coaching program is going to be about so um while i love talking about marketing and like i love like the tech stuff Mindset is something that I've had to work on a lot in the last two years. So I definitely want to include that um, in my coaching program and thus these go lives as well. So cheers to a beautiful Tuesday. Um, where I want to start with the four mindsets of a successful leader. And to be fair, you might, might not consider yourself a leader yet, but... The farther you delve into your entrepreneurial journey, uh, the farther you delve into your personal development, the leader will come out. And that's what I have found over the last year or so. My leader has started to come out, which has been huge for me. And I definitely want to like explore that aspect of it. And that's why with the coaching program and stuff, and I actually reached out to Todd via email over the weekend after our huge session. We had like five hours on Friday and then another two and a half hours on, on Saturday. And it was like so crazy to me. Um, I think he called it the tactical mind or something. This it's part of the accelerator program that AI is offering. So it's, it, it, it introduces mindset into like the accelerator, like the affiliate accelerator program. That's part of the affiliate Institute. And that's why he's like, mindset is such a huge deal when it comes to starting your own business or even uh, introducing marketing into your business or like learning new things about your business or anything like that. Right? So mindset is such a huge deal. Um, the first one that I want to talk about is the growth mindset. This is key for anybody that even has a business, even if you're not, if you don't think you're a leader yet. Hey guys, can we not fight please? Shay, Shay, find your own picture. Yeah, go, Shay. It's constant, the fighting. And my husband's not here, he's on day shift now, so. Let's watch the show or I'll turn it off. Hey, hey, hey. Can we watch the show or I'll turn it off, please? I love my kids. <laughs> I keep telling myself that every day. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> I am bribing them with <clears throat> this that I found at Costco a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Fun with balloon animals. I haven't brought it out yet because I was waiting for something big to bribe them with. And I'm like, if you guys bug me once on this go live, I will not open it. <laughs> yes, I know. I'm that mom. Anyway, so we're talking about growth mindset. Cultivating a growth mindset could be the single most important thing you ever do to help you achieve, achieve success. Willingness to change is a strength. Even if... <laughs> Jenna says it's awesome. Love you, girl. <laughs> Even if <clears throat> it means plunging yourself into total 
confusion, especially if you are willing to step into the chaos that is growth. And we all know that if you are sitting in your comfort zone, there's no growth. And but as soon as you step out, you're like, oh, I don't know if I like this. It starts to like roll around you and it's a little chaotic and, and it's a little confusing. And you're like, nope, no, 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 retreat back. No, keep pushing outside. That is growth mindset. When you believe you can learn, you improve, when you can learn, grow and improve, we become willing to approach challenges, failures and opportunities to advance as opposed to things, to, to these things that like we normally would back away from, right? Normally I would back away from creating my own coaching program. It scares the crap out of me, but it's something that I'm doing and I'm so excited, but scared at the same time. And that's, to me, that's when I know that I am pushing myself into my growth mindset. Along with that, doing the accelerator, having my own agency, like everybody thought that I was nuts to do everything like kind of all at the same time. And I'm like, no, I needed to create this like chaotic craziness outside of my comfort zone so that I could have a growth mindset, so that I could grow as a leader, as an entrepreneur, as a coach or whatever you want to call me, just so that you know, the growth could continue and I could just keep pushing myself outside of my comfort zone and my comfort zone keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Right? So I got to keep pushing myself outside of the comfort zone. And that's why I created that chaos for myself with all of these things that I was doing. It started in like January, February and people were like, you're crazy. You're doing all these things. And I'm like, yeah, cause I have to, I have to push myself outside of my comfort zone. I oh, love you too, Jenna. Um, just to create that you know, just to push myself outside of my comfort zone. Your comfort zone may be like this and it's your own comfort zone. You can't compare your comfort zone to my comfort zone. That's not fair. I've been doing so much work on, you know, myself and my business and, and doing all these things that I had to create that chaos in order to grow. And other people's chaos looks, will look a lot different than mine. So that's what matters is that you create your own chaos and don't base your comfort zone on somebody else's or pushing yourself outside your comfort zone on somebody else's because you can't. You're two different people. So please be kind to yourself. Do not compare your growth to somebody else's, please. Uh, the second one is an open mindset. So this means that you can admit that you don't have all the answers, which I do very frequently. I don't wanna say that I have all these mindsets, but this one, I do admit that I don't have all the answers most of the time. I'm always, always searching for the next, not really the next best thing, but like a different answer to my questions or different methods to what I do. <clears throat> so um, the primary focus is thinking optimally and finding truth. This leads us to asking questions, invite new perspectives, and seeing disagreements as opportunities to learn. Hey, Tina, what's up, girl? Um, this creates a psychologically safe and engaging environment. So when you do something like create a group like I did, and you post views or methods or anything, and people come in and say, well, this is how I do things, or this is what I think, or whatever. That's okay. This, this, these disagreements or these challenges prove as opportunities to learn. So whether you're learning a new skill or learning something new about your mindset, everybody has opinions about all this COVID stuff going around. Don't get me started on that. And that is good. We're all like, we have free will. We are allowed to have our own opinions and we're allowed to have our own methods of doing stuff. And it's funny because we were jumping, you know, I jump on goal, not goal lives. I jump on Zooms with, you know, a mentor of mine probably a couple times a week. Um, and then I'm always on some sort of Zoom with somebody a couple times, a few other times a week. And it's about the conversations that happen within those, um, whether you're saying, 
Oh, <laughs> Tina says, not sure what my topic is. I'm talking about the four mindsets of successful leaders. So this one, I talked about growth mindset already, which we all know you have, my lady. And now it's open mindset. So they could be seen as kind of the same thing, but they're not. I know there's, there's a couple of key little differences. So when it comes to people doing things their way, and it's their way or the highway, closed, right? An open mindset means that you're open to these disagreements or discussions that lead to better things. So when um, I was talking to Tyler, my mentor, Tyler Caldwell, uh, with my agency, and he, I said that I was doing this and this, and he's like, oh, I never really thought of doing something like that. But that means that he has an open mindset and he's willing to try some new things and it's vice versa. And he's like, oh yeah, well we do this this way and blah, blah, blah. And whatever, we talk about different things, whether it's like methods or whatever. And I'm like, oh yeah, that would be a really good way of doing that. And it's, it's, it's a back and forth. It's, it's being open to new ideas and learning new possibilities of different things, right? So number three is a promotion mindset. And this is one that I struggle with. So people with a promotion mindset are purpose-centered. They have a clear goal and are focused on making progress towards that goal. Sometimes I get distracted. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> the opposite of a promotion mindset, which I don't think I'm an opposite, but I'm kind of not really in the middle, but like leaning towards promotion, but like still not quite, um, is a prevention mindset that is comfort centered. You're staying in your comfort zone. You're not leaving for nothing and everybody can go to hell. Basically. <laughs> Tina got a kick out of that. Love you girl. <laughs> so good leaders create vision and articulate the vision and passionately own the vision and relentlessly drive it to completion. I have my vision I articulate my vision sometimes. I don't passionately own my vision that much. And I don't relentlessly drive it to completion. Not all day, every day. And I mean, sometimes you need a break, right? Just like anything else. But it's not something that's like continuous. I have my vision and I know what I want for mine and my family's future. But sometimes stuff gets in the way. Like pumping water out for almost two weeks. Sorry, not sorry, because I needed to save my basement. <laughs> so a promotion mindset is key, but let's be fair. I don't exactly like do all of those things specifically. <laughs> um, I don't know if anybody on this call right now is kind of of the promotion mindset where they're like, yes, this is what I'm doing, this is how I'm doing it, and this is how everybody knows that I'm doing and why I'm doing it and how I'm doing it and everything, and it's just like constant, right? Tina says that I, she thinks that, sh that I'm selling myself short. And to be fair, I probably am a little bit. It's not, I'm not as like focused, like on stuff as I sh probably should be. I do, my mind tends to wander a little bit here and there. And that's probably comes from having a few different things going at the same time. So it's good to like have different focuses, I guess, for me, just because I get distracted so easily. <laughs> so I can go from one thing to another thing um, and just still kind of keep them going, still kind of driving. It's like driving a team of horses. Like you got to keep them all going at the same time, right? <laughs> I don't know if anybody can relate to the whole horse thing. I know Jenna can. Um, so the fourth one, is an outward mindset. So this means that you see those you lead as being important, if not more important than yourself. And for me, this is like, true leaders have a servant's heart. That's a quote from Christine Kane. And I love that quote because I feel that to my core. I, um, I'm not like here to, you know, like toot my own horn immensely but that is something that you know when there is an opportunity to help that that's where I am I live to help others and that's why I love my coaching program and how I'm developing it and everything is like from is outward mindset centric definitely 100% and I almost feel bad charging money for it but 
we all have to earn a bit of a living, right? So that's just the way that it goes sometimes. But um, an inward mindset is when the leaders see themselves as being more important than those they lead. And then seeing those people that they lead as like objects. And I am so not that. I do not have an inward mindset at all. So that's the opposite of having an outward mindset. Uh, great leaders love seeing people grow. And I am all about that. Like if I can help you learn, if I can help, like not just like doing stuff for you. Like there was um, a lady that I was helping with in our accelerator program was helping her with some of her tech stuff. We were jumping on Zoom. I kind of took over her thing and I'm like, okay, see what I'm doing and blah, blah, blah. And she's like, she's taking notes and she's like, oh my goodness, I did not even know that you could do that. Or you, could, or you should do that, or any of this stuff. And I said, well, it's all about the pro, we're talking about her, her funnel, her sales, her sales funnel. And we're talking about like the different steps in her sales funnel and how different things are tracked. And people are like, Facebook pixel? What the hell is a Facebook pixel? <laughs> and they do teach us, you know, the Facebook pixel and how to put it in different places for the most part in our program. But there was just some other little things that she wasn't quite seen clearly. So I just needed to take her through the process and like talk her, like just speak differently about it. And people live at, live, people learn at different rates. People learn from, from different explanations. Like there's some, there was one teacher that I had, I'm going to go on a bit of a tangent, but there was a teacher that I had in, um, in college, my first year of college who taught me math 101, which is essentially calculus, which we don't like calculus. But it could have been the teacher, like the way that he explained stuff and I would keep, I would go back to him like after school hours or whatever. I'm like, I'm just not getting it. And I scraped by math 101 with like a C or something. It was like by the skin of my teeth. I've never gotten a grade that low in my life kind of grade. I passed high school with like, you know, almost, I passed high school with like principal's honors. I did not get all A's, but you know, I was a pretty good student. And when I'm like, I just don't understand what you're trying to teach me. And then uh, math 102 in the next semester, I bombed like completely. And he's like, well, you just, you just don't learn this. I'm like, no, I think it's your teaching style because I got stuff like math in high school, physics, you know, all the stuff in high school I could understand. But then coming here, maybe it's, it's the college atmosphere. Maybe it's just you, I don't know, but there was something, there was a misconnect. So sometimes it's with the way that the leader, the teacher is teaching. So if, so this lady that I was teaching, she didn't quite understand. She didn't quite put the pieces together of this puzzle that is her sales funnel. And I'm like, oh, well you just do this and this. She's like, oh my goodness, that was explained so much easier for me. And I'm glad that I could help her out. See, right now she's learning and just growing from us being on a like a 30 minute go live, right? It doesn't take hours to learn Facebook pixels and sales funnels. It just takes little tweaks here and there, right? So <laughs> the day that you are, the day that you are afraid of your student or the people that you lead being better than you is the day that, day that you fail as a leader. And that kind of really hit home for me because I, I live to see people grow. And you know what? If you can teach me something, friggin' awesome. Like, bring it on. I love to learn and I love to see the people that I'm teaching grow more than me. Um, I think that, anyway, that's probably my outward mindset. So before you are a leader, success means growing yourself. And that's how I was for the first year or so of my online journey. I, was, I wasn't quite leader mentality. I didn't have a lot of outward mindset. I had a lot, of, a lot of scarcity mindset, like jealousy, people succeeding. But when you step into your leadership role, success is, about all, is all about growing others, if I could speak today. Blah. So those are the four mindsets of successful leaders. So the, the first one was a growth mindset, then an open mindset, then a promotion mindset, then an outward mindset. And I know it seems like people are like, oh, we'll just have a positive mindset. Mm -mm, it's a little 
little bit more to that than a little bit more to this whole mindset thing than meets the eye. But start there and grow and you will surely step into your leadership role with all of these mindsets. And I'm sure there are more. Those are the ones I come up with off the top of my head this morning. <laughs> So I hope you all have a great day. Thank you, Jenna and Tina, for jumping on with me live. I love you, ladies, as usual. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you're watching the replay, um, type in replay. I'd love to see who watches my awesome videos, my awesome um, replays of my videos. Um, you can also find them on my YouTube channel. I can post the link in here or we can have like a YouTube following link. If you guys have other YouTube channels that we can like support each other within this group. Um, so yeah, my YouTube channel and oh, it's on my Facebook profile too. I think, I think I put it on there anyway. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what a timely message. Always delivering goal. My friend. Thank you. Thank you, Tina. I love you so much. Oh, you're always there to support me. I love it. Um, so yeah, my YouTube channel has it has my replays and also my website. Um, I put them on my website so they're easy to find and they're all in one place. Um, I'm trying to make it a little more streamlined so that you can see, so you don't have to like click into each episode to see what they're about. I'm trying to make them like put the titles on the top so that you can just kind of scroll and see what's there. Um, and then of course, inside my group, my free group, if you're not in it yet and you're watching the replay somewhere like my YouTube channel or my website, there should be a button or a link somewhere around this video so you could click it and request access into this group so you can join me live just like Tina and Jenna did this morning every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time or Mountain Daylight Time, I think we are now, MDT. Uh, mountain Time, Alberta Time. Woohoo! Go Canada! Um, I think that's all I had for you guys today. <laughs> I'm like going off on random weird tangent topics, but you know what? As long as you find them entertaining and motivating and everything, then my job here is done. Have a great week. I will see you next week. Bye.